That title sequence was filmed at Upping Holt, part of the ADMES Railroad at Whirlwell in Hampshire. Today's video is going to focus on how we sequenced and programmed the signals to work at that junction. If we look down from this aerial shot, you can see that Upping Holt has got two incoming lines, both entering from the left of screen, and one outgoing line leaving on the right. The top incoming line is the main line, and the bottom incoming line is the branch line. Before we program a sequence, we always ask the user of the junction if there are any special rules we need to apply, and there is one special rule we need to adhere to at Upping Holt. And that is because the junction is on a gradient, should a train be approaching from the main line, like this one here, we have to allow it to proceed across the junction without being slowed down while a red aspect changes to green. So that infers that the aspect on the main line should always be green unless there is a branch line train or another train actually on the junction. In order to understand how to program the junction, let's start by drawing a schematic of the junction we're about to signal. You can see the main line at the top and the branch line coming in at an angle, and where they join is the set of trailing points. The sensors start with letter S and there's five of those. SO5 and SO6 are on the main line. SO5 is around 10 metres before the aspect and that tells the aspect when the train is coming up the main line and is far enough back such that the aspect, if it can, would have changed to green before the train has to start to slow. Sensor 06 is in line with or just beyond the aspect and that sensor is responsible for turning the aspect back to red once a train has crossed the aspect threshold. And finally, when a train clears the junction, sensor 09 clears the junction back to its default state, where it will then check for any trains that have entered the junction and were held on reds while the junction was occupied, or will tell the junction to wait for the next train on either the main or branch line. Similar to the main line, the branch line has sensor 07 and sensor 08. 07 tells the system a train is coming up the branch line, and sensor 08, which is in line with or just beyond the branch aspect, puts the branch aspect to red once a train has crossed the aspect threshold. Now we understand the physical layout and where the sensors and aspects are, let's look in depth at how we program the sensors themselves to work and signal this junction. Let's look at the programming of the junction clear sensor S09. It only has one state programmed, state 0. We chose 0 as this is the power up state. All state 0 does is to trigger and tell S5 to go to state 0. That means that every time an activation of S9 occurs, that is when a train leaves the junction, it will cause SO5, the main line before sensor, to change to state zero. That is all the junction clear sensor SO9 does, and it does it every time it is activated. Let's now look at what happens within SO5, the main line before aspect sensor, when it is commanded to change its state to state zero by a junction clear event. Looking at SO5, we can see that it is set to trigger on flag or short, and it also has a sequence send set to command SO7, the branch line before aspect sensor, to change its state to state zero. If a train is waiting at the main line aspect, the F flag in that sensor, in this case SO5, would be set. How that happens will become very clear later. As state zero is set to trigger on flag or short, and the flag is set, the sensor will immediately trigger and will cause SO7, which is the branch line before aspect sensor, to enter state one. The before aspect branch sensor SO7, state one, is programmed to set the F flag if triggered, and it then sequence sends aspect O1 to show a green giving the main line waiting train clearance to proceed into the junction. How we program aspect states in the ASP222 is covered in the ASP222 video. So if we look at where we are now, 
any train coming up the branch line and crossing sensor 07 will cause the F flag in sensor 07 to be set. The train on the main line has now got a green to proceed and so it proceeds into the junction. It crosses sensor 06. Sensor 06 has only got one state programmed. Again, it's state zero, the power up state. And all that does is tell sensor 05 to enter state one. Sensor 05 entering state one clears the F flag and sets sensor 05 to set the F flag when triggered. Now what that means is every wheel set that goes over sensor 06 effectively causes the F flag to be cleared in sensor 05. So the last wheel crossing sensor 06 will leave sensor 05 waiting with the F flag unset for a train to cross it. And if a train does cross it before the junction is cleared, it will set the F flag in sensor 05. Sensor 05 entering state one also sequence ends aspect 01 to show a red aspect so that once the train has crossed sensor 06, it shows red, so any train behind it will stop at the aspect. So that's what happens when a train leaves the junction and the F flag is set on sensor 05 because a train had passed it while the junction was in use and was waiting at the red aspect. Let's now look at what happens if there wasn't a train on the main line. Just as before, sensor 09 commands sensor 05 to change to state 0 when the train leaves the junction. This time, however, the F flag in sensor 05 is not set as a train has not crossed it while the junction was in use. So instead of triggering and sending sensor 07 to state 1, initiating the sequence that results in a green on the main line, it instead sequence sends sensor 07 to state 0. Sensor 07 state 0 is where the sequence ends. So if no trains are waiting at either main or branch line, both lines are left waiting for a trigger that will cause a green on that line. If, however, there was a train waiting at the branch line aspect when the junction cleared, but there was not a train waiting on the main line, a similar process to the main line sequence we've looked at before is run. It will use sensor 07, sensor 08 and aspect 03 instead of sensor 05, sensor 06 and aspect 01. Pause the video now, have a go at writing the sequence using those aspects, and then unpause the video and have a look at my programming. I've given you a start by setting Sensor 07's trigger on flag or short to command Sensor 05 to go to state 2. So how did you do? You should have noticed the solution was very similar to what we did before when we had a train waiting on the main line, but just uses different aspects and centers. The logic flow was exactly the same. Let's look at what I did. What I said was a train waiting at the branch line aspect would have caused the F flag to be set in center 07. So when center 07 entered state naught, by the sequence send from sensor 05, it would have immediately triggered and made sensor 05 go to state two. I've programmed sensor 05 state two to set the F flag if triggered. This makes sure that any trains coming up the main line while this train is in the junction will only set the F flag. And we do this so when the junction clears, we can know a train is waiting on the main line and proceed it through the junction exactly as we did at the start of this section. Sensor 05 state 2 then sequence sends aspect 03 to show green and that allows the waiting branch line train to proceed through the junction. Just like sensor 06, sensor 08 then sets sensor 07 to state 2 where it clears the F flag and then sets the F flag if triggered. So a train coming up behind this one, once this one's in the junction, will set the F flag on sensor 07. Sensor 07 also sends aspect 03 to a state where it shows red, 
stopping any train while this one is proceeding through the junction. Well, there we go. How did you do? Hopefully you came up with a solution. It may not have been the same as mine. There's many ways of doing it, and maybe yours is better. If it is, put it in the comments below, or email us at pksignals at yahoo.com. Well, thank you for watching the video. We'll close it out now with some shots of this solution at Uppingholt.